My name is Shreya. So, uh, Shivangi means uh, what do you know about SAP? Means, uh, do you have any idea about SAP? What is SAP? What is SAP ABAP? What is the ABAP development? If you have any idea, then just uh, tell me. Uh, yes, a little bit. Okay. Uh, SAP is a system application for it. It is a uh, connecting uh, one business to another business through uh, I mean, they get they gather one department to another department kind of and uh, abap is advanced business programming development it is uh, not um, like uh, it's a coding uh, I mean, for sap servers in you know, a sap servers for other function modules okay like Okay. Yeah. Good. Similar uh, to the Java. Yes. Uh, good. Uh, so I will quickly um, give a brief introduction about SAP. SAP is nothing but ERP. ERP is Enterprise Resource Planner. Okay, which manages business organizations business, and any uh, uh, which manages uh, daily day to day activities within a uh, organization. So it is a software which manages the business, okay, which manages the organization's daily activity. So uh, if you visit any, uh, any fabric industry, any automobile industry, all these um, purchase department, uh, sales department, uh, proc uh, procurement, uh, sorry, uh, production department, all these departments are, means they need to do some transactions, right, to, uh, to manufacture a product, right? So all these transactions like selling, uh, purchasing raw material, uh, make a product, uh, making products, all these transactions, all these entries will get saved in a system. For that to handle that day-to-day -day transactions, uh, they need software. So there are a lot of ERPs available in market. So why SAP? So SAP is a global software which provides a lot of better, lot of best features as compared to other ERPs. The security point of view. Data uh, means that if we have uh, means uh, there is a data uh, speed, data accessing speed, and all these things are a lot of features we can see, which is must, which is much better than other ERPs. So security point of view, <clears throat> SAP is the best. So this is that's why it is globally used. So uh, SAP simply SAP is nothing but ERP. ERP is a software which manages the business simply. So, uh, like the SAP has provided standard software, right? But uh, <clears throat> we have to, we cannot adapt SAP as it is. We need to configure it as per the business requirement. So, there are two roles in SAP basically, uh, majorly. Uh, Shivangi, uh, <clears throat> so what is, uh, there are major two roles in SAP, like functional development and uh, 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 a technical, uh, search functional developer and functional consultant and technical consultant. So in technical consultant, uh, like uh, people like us, ABAP uh, developers will, uh, the role of ABAP developer will come in picture for a technical consultant. So basically SAP has provided st standard software, but we cannot adopt it as it is because as per business, because uh, all different business process, ha uh, different businesses has a different business process. So we need to map these processes. So we need to map these processes. That's why a functional consultant will do the configuration as per requirement. And whatever it is not possible through the configuration, we need to make it through uh, uh, ABAP code, ABAP language. Okay. So advanced business application programming is a language which is uh, the uh, SAP is built up from this language. So if you want to, if you want to enhance the existing software, if you want to create custom uh, applications, then we need to go with ABAP development. So this is just a uh, basic idea about what is SAP and what is the uh, uh, role of ABAP developer. So uh, till here, you have any doubt? No, not now. We are going to learn uh, SAP ABAP, uh, basic core ABAP and ABAP on HANA. So uh, basically, uh, I have covered almost 90 to 98, 98 to 99% syllabus. Uh, once we once we complete the session, and if you find till like if any if you want any other topic, then you can suggest me. Definitely, we will cover this. <clears throat> okay.
yeah uh, so basically uh, i'll explain you what is sap r3 system okay what is r3 architecture okay the earlier version was sap r1 version okay which which was released in 1972 to something uh, like so it, it was r1 version then uh, after that r2 version was sap released r2 version then uh, r3 version so basically <clears throat> in r1 r2 r3 what is the difference definitely there is a difference in r3 system presentation layer application layer and database layer so you can see presentation layer means sap gis screen so <clears throat> sap gis screen uh, this uh, presentation layer was separated and it was kept on another server application layer was kept on another server so in application layer what happens the whatever processing logic we write it will get executed in a process in application layer so all calculation a logical uh, operations will will uh, will get processed on a application layer and whatever data extraction uh, is there and what a data fetching data inserting data updations all the data related operation will will, will happen on a database layer so basically when we send request from presentation layer all the processing will happen on a application layer and data required for that processing will get fetched from database layer to the application layer so these three servers <coughs> will work sing uh, will work synchronously and <coughs> in r3 system in before that r in r2 system presentation and application layer were combined together on a one single server single machine and database layer was kept on another server in r1 all three servers were on a single server so at a time one user was able to perform the his task multiple users cannot uh, was not allowed to do the task over a period of time, a period of time when data demand uh, demand increased drastically at that time uh, these three servers uh, kept on different this uh, these three layers kept on different machines so that uh, multiple users can access the, uh, can access uh, the system and can get the data and can uh, complete the processing request suppose there are four users which are working parallelly okay then what happens or uh, the request will come and the app, you know, application layer dispatcher within the application will convert that request into work process and this work process will communicate with database and the role of buffer is to save this request and pick this request from the queue and convert it into work process and uh, this work process will communicate with database system and database will give, give the result back to the application layer once the processing is done then uh, we have to throw back the result to the sap screen so this is a simple presentation application and database layer mechanism are you getting me yes okay so this is very basic um uh, basic uh, communication between these three servers and role of dispatcher is just to uh, get the request and convert it into work process and so that work process will communicate with the database layer so next is uh, we have to check what is the sap development workbench okay what is development workbench so through this menu also we can navigate to each and every like abap dictionary uh, class builder abap editor functional builder so these are the sc11 you can see here this sc11 sc38 sc37 these are the t codes okay this whatever uh, we need for development uh, for, for particular requirement so we can access with these are the development tools means through the sc38 we can create reports okay sc11 is like heart of sap abap okay we can create lot of uh, uh, tables custom tables structures views in upcoming section uh, in upcoming sessions uh, we will see each and every topic in detail so basically this is a sc24 is a class builder like we uh, if you have heard uh, means if you have, if you know a c c++ language then in c++ we learn like class methods right how to write logic in a class and methods so yes. we can do yes object oriented programming here also through the sc24 so there are a lot of things or uh, there is an enhancement framework or so means we can enhance the existing software so a lot of options are available based on requirement we need to uh, we need to choose do we need to create report do we need, do we need to uh, enhance the existing report so based on requirement we need to analyze the requirement and then we need to uh, go with the specific development so these are the options available here okay one by one we will learn each and every topic this is nothing but these, these are topics we, we these are means we need to learn this abap dictionary we need to just abap editor 
and how to create reports, <laughs> include programs uh, like modulable programming, all these things we need, we have to learn here. So next is like uh, that is a, yeah. Oh, can I interrupt? What exactly T code means? T code means we can just navigate to this screen. Okay. I will show you. T code is nothing but transaction code, okay? And when we log in, uh, this is SAP Jira. Mm -hmm. I'll quickly log in and I'll let me show you. Okay, this is my login and password. Uh, so SC38. This is a T code. See, this is a T code. This is a command. Uh, this is a command bar, and I have passed this transaction code. So this is a transaction. So once I'm past this SC38, so I, I'm able to see the screen. So if I open okay. any of this report, then you can I can see this code. Okay. And yes. here it is a button to exit to execute this code. So once we execute this, I can see the output here. So this is the output for this report. So like uh, input means we can give the input and we can get the result back. So this is a simple mechanism behind this reports. That means uh, T code is not nothing but uh, only a navigation type of Yes, thing. navigation to the particular uh, screens or per particular uh, function. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> So there is a, a slash and SC11. SC11 is T code. Through this T code, we can create custom tables, views, data types, uh, like data element, domain, search help, all these things. It means uh, ABAP is a ABAP is why ABAP is event based, event driven language. Okay, I will tell you. So basically, whatever logic we are going to write, uh, means we need to write that logic under the events. Means, for example, when we want to extract data from database, okay, whatever select query we have to write, we have to write that select query to get data from database under startup selection event. If you want to print heading for that particular report, then we need to write under top of the page. If you want to write something at the end, bottom of the page, then we can have to write through the uh, under that top of the page. So there are 11 plus 11, 11 plus events are available. Okay, as and when, as per requirement, we have to use this event. Means for example, when we write code, okay, when we execute this code, when we execute this code, when we click on execution button, okay, at that time, this uh, program will get load into RAM. So load of the program, this event will get called by default. Okay, we no need to specify this event. That's why we are saying it is ABAP is nothing but event based, uh, event driven language. Uh, so there are uh, these types of programs available. Like there is an executable program. Executable program means we just directly execute it. Uh, we can just give effort. Then it will get executed automatically. And there is a modulable programming. In modulable programming, we can design these uh, screens. If uh, I get requirement, I need to design the uh, same screen. So I can use this radio uh, check uh, radio buttons, this input output field, this button, these icons. So same to same screen I can design through the model field programming. So this is nothing but just drag and drop, and we need to write the functionality behind this. Means once on click of this, it should display uh, the particular uh, table view. So this is just drag and drop functionality available to design the screens and behind the uh, function, behind the button, behind the action buttons, we need to write our custom logic. So all these things we will learn in a module pool programming. So there is a okay. function group, yeah, class pool is there, interface pool is there, subroutine pool is there, include programs are there. So we have to learn all these types of programs. Uh, next is the data dictionary. So, Always we need to uh, cover each and every subtopics within the data dictionary because if, when you face an interview, you will get a lot of questions on data dictionary and you, you will get, I means this is a very simple topic, but you will get a lot of tricky questions in the data dictionary. So it is, uh, that's why it is very important to co to learn each and every uh, topic in very, uh, in very detailed way. So uh, we'll see what are the types of table We'll see structures, what is deep structure, what is nested structure. We'll see what are the types of views, what are the what are the types of views, what is data element, what is domain, what is the significance of data element, why we need to create domain. Search help, we will see search help. I mean, search help means we, uh, we, if you want to show predefined set of values, proposed set of values to the user. So we'll see search help, means how to create that. 
through the search shelf. We'll see lock objects, we'll see type groups, we'll see table types. Lock objects are used to synchronize access, means suppose if we want to access the same set of data, if there are multiple users and they're accessing same set of data parallelly or uh, at the same time, then uh, this object should get locked to one user. Once the uh, request, a uh, lock request is released, then it should be get accessible to another user. If multiple users are accessing common set of data, then their data in it will create data inconsistency. So to, synchro to synchronize access to the common set of data, okay, we need to use lock objects. So next is open SQL. So uh, see here uh, again in search help also there is like uh, what is a hotspot technique. So all these uh, detail, uh, detail, detail, little minor details we are going to cover so that you can uh, you can uh, create good impression on interviewer because your interview will start from this topic only. Definitely. So you have to give a hundred percent for this topic. Means you have to give hundred percent to all topics, but basically it will be a starting point for your interview. Definitely you need to uh, you need to give answer for all of the questions which are coming from coming for data data dictionary okay so yes. next is open sql in open sql we will learn how to uh, get data from database system how to insert data how to update modify delete uh what are the inner joins what are the joins allowed we'll see new syntaxes available for hana also so we are going to cover all this in open sql next is reports as discussed, like uh, if you want to, for example, uh, if you visit a fabric industry and your manager, if you are manager of purchase department, suppose your manager of purchase department and you are asking your subordinates like, uh, uh, give me a report from 1st of December to uh, what is the date today or is it 16th of December? I want what what are the uh, means what I want to see how how much uh, amount of uh, cotton the fabric cotton you have ordered then this uh, buyer will go to the sap system he will open one particular transaction okay he will pass the debt debt range like first of the first of december to 16th of december he will pass this as the input field and he will put the company code plan details all these things and he will put the material as a cotton fabric material code for cotton fabric fabric there must be a material code in the system so he will put he will put all the input fields he will just uh, execute the program okay he will get output like from 1st of december to the 16th of december how uh, how many um, uh, how, uh, how, how much how, uh, how many how much meters of uh, cotton fabric has import has ordered and how much uh, it is received and all these things he will get a report he have to just download that report and he have to he has to mail to the manager so simply we need to develop such kind of reports to get data from uh, in reports we need to just get data from database we need to so apply some processing logic and we need to uh, create one desired outcome okay which means we have to design such a way like uh, as per the customer requirement so uh, means number of columns, what what should be the columns, what should be, if you want to highlight the specific field, if you want to give a different style, all these things we are going to learn under this LV reports. And class nowadays no one use classical reports, but still for the event learning, we are going to cover classical reports, interactive reports and LV reports. So in the market, most of the people are working with only LV reports because in LV reports, we will get a lot of feature like uh, filter, sort, ascend, I mean, ascending, descending order, summation, aggregation functions, search, uh, means all these things we will be, uh, all these options are available in LV reports. So uh, that's why uh, people prefer LV reports. So we are going to cover these three types of reports in the reports topic. Yeah. Next is modularization techniques. Suppose there are uh, 10,000 lines of code available. If, uh, if there is a 10,000 lines of code available and um, there is a, if I notice like, uh, if we notice like there are multiple, um, at multiple places, same piece of line of code is repeating. Suppose there are 10,000 line of code and same piece of code is repeating at multiple positions. Then to avoid uh, the redundancy, to avoid the duplication of code, we need to bundle that code in a specific routine. And we need to call that code, means we have to write that piece of code only once and we need to call this code only. So these all techniques we have to we have to cover under 
modularization techniques. This, in short, we have to modularize code. We have to write that code in bits and pieces. And we need to call that in a specific at specific position where it is required and where it is re re repeat. Means we need no need to write. Suppose there are ten lines of code which is repeating after every means this this is repeating continuously repeating in a program. So these ten lines of code we have to write only once, and we need to call that uh, function at uh, required positions only. So in upcoming upcoming session we will do practically. Uh, we will understand okay how to uh, how to achieve this modularization techniques. So subroutines, uh, function models, macros, and class and methods. These are the four options available to modularize the code. Uh, there are four are doing the same thing to repeat code and for repeating codes. These are the, yeah, these are the four different techniques. Yeah, is the, if, the, if you are using OOPS approach, then we need to use class and methods. And if you are using function modules, means if you are using the procedural programming, then we can use subroutines. Yeah. Means okay. uh, when we will do it practically, you will definitely understand how to modularize the code. Next is modulable programming. As discussed, uh, modulable programming in modulable programming, we can design screen and we can write logic. Means for example, if I get a requirement which is not uh, uh, means which is not fulfilling uh, the SAP standard requirement, and what at the time what we will do? Okay, we need to design one screen. We need to put some uh, specific buttons, radio buttons, check boxes. After that, we need to call one more screen. So it is a module pool means we are uh, we are come we are doing we are developing one small or any complex application. So yeah, this is uh, we can handle through the uh, module pool programming technique, and there are various control available in the module pool programming. For screen designing means once click on uh, any screen button, we need to write a, a logic and a process after for process after input event. So there are multiple events available. So we are going to cover all these events and we are going to uh, see how to create a custom screen as per real time scenarios. For example, you know, uh, there is a quality department, okay, quality checking department. If that quality guy want a screen, okay, uh, like he want to give a quality inspection number, he want that uh, job number, he want to put the job number, he want to, he want one input field of 100 characters where he can short briefly uh, give his observation like the quality, uh, whatever quality note is there. And he want to pass the date field and date and he want to just save this. We have to give this, we have to get this four or five fields from the uh that quality guy so we have to design a screen accordingly so uh so how it the, how this screen will look like there will be a uh, one input input box for to get the job id or job number or that product number then there, there will be one more input uh input box to get a uh, detailed observation for, uh, quality observation there will be a date input field and there will be a save button on click of save it will uh, it will save the data in a database so this is just like a, a simple screen design. So we are going to learn this in a model program. For that screen designing, we have a particular T code for what we design. Yeah. Yes, we have to, I uh, mean, just when we design the screen, yes. SA80 is a T code. Okay, SA51 is a T code to design the screen. And SA41 is a T code to design the menu. Menu means back button. Uh, like there are so many buttons available back exit close button so here in, in the here these are this is a menu yes. so we can design this in sc 41 since we are going to learn about how to upload data in bulk to the sap system when we implement sap system in our organization we have to get the previous data it means there must be other erp system and when we switch to the sap system from that legacy system or we can say old as if all old ERP system, we need to get data into Excel file or any CSV file, and we need to upload the data in a bulk. For this, uh, we are going to learn conversion techniques. See, it's not possible to can you it. repeat it, please? Sorry, and yeah, yeah. slowly. Oh uh, yes. So in conversions, we are going to upload data in bulk quantity in SAP system. For example, there is one old one old ERP system in our organization. Okay, and when we have implemented SAP system, we have to get all the data from that old SAP system, right? From the legacy system. So we have to download that data into Excel file for, from old system, right? And then we have to create one CSV file or Excel file as per the SAP template. 
and we have to upload that file in the SAP system so that all the data will come into SAP system automatically just on single click of button. So these are the techniques available: badge data communication, session method, call transaction, BAPIs. So all these uh, things are available. We are going to learn how to upload data in a bulk quantity in SAP system. See, it's not possible to create data manually. Suppose there are three lakh supplier details available in an old system. Is it possible to create or three lakh details manually in SAP system? Is it possible? No. So there must be, uh, yeah, we need to collect the data in Excel file and we have to just upload that Excel file so that all the data will come in the SAP database automatically. Yeah. So these are the conversion techniques. So forms, uh, so there are three types of forms. Script is there, smart form is there, Adobe form is there. So when you uh, when you visit a DMART, okay, you will get a bill, right? You will get invoice. Yes. So have you noticed that how it looks like, like there is a one to, at the top, there is a branch address, DMART branch address, there is a GST number, current date, right? All these things are there. If you go down, then you have like uh, product, code product description product quantity right and uh, discount total savings and if you see there is must be add rules and conditions behind that page so this is a form right this is a specific format so uh, similarly through the sap system we have to uh, print some documents right credit note is there sales order is there purchase order is there sales invoice is there so these are the forms, right? These are the legal documents, right? Which we have to keep in the records, right? So we have to design this through the smart forms and Adobe forms. Yeah, can you visualize this? Means uh, the form, there are rows and columns. There's a table. I can visualize the DMART invoice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Similarly, we can, uh, as, per, as per different business requirement, we can um design this form means what the sales executive what that sales executive does he gives this print he just scans all the material it will make a bill and he will just send that print right so the system will pick a specific pick a specific specific format right and it will pass all the data right so that this form will get printed on a paper right yes so there is a skeleton right there must be a blank skeleton we need to design first okay yes. and all the values will just get populated on that form and it will just get print out so we yes, have to design okay. this yeah uh, next is announcement in announcement we have these options like user exit is there customer exit is there implicit explicit announcement there bodies are there so announcement is what see we cannot modify SAP standard code we cannot modify directly we have some specific points available within the SAP, and from there only we can put from uh, at that position only we can put our custom logic. Are you getting me? So SAP has provided yes. some points. SAP has provided some places where only we can put our custom logic. So enhancement is what we are enhancing the existing functionality. We are not modifying. We are enhancing means we are putting some more custom logic as per requirement for example there is one similar report. to adding something on a standard form yes yes according to the yeah, yeah. I, I, according to the guidelines provided by SAP only okay okay so basically uh, for example uh, there is a one report me2l report Okay, and we have, uh, we have, uh, there are uh, like 80 fields, 80 columns in the output. There is a purchase order number is there, a supplier name is there, um, a material quantity is there, all this issue quantity is there, all this is, suppose there is a, a lot of uh, columns, like 80 columns are there. And user want one more column to that standard report, ME2L report. Uh, okay, ME2L is a standard report. ME2L is standard report, okay. which is provided by SAP. Okay. Yes. So if okay. user want to add one more additional column, now suppose it is nothing but handling unit. So user want to see handling unit column also. So how we can enhance this? So for this, for that we need to find suitable body. First of all, we need to give the preference to the body, which is business add-ins. 
we need to okay. find the body at the at that position we can put our custom logic to add that one more column additional column if we don't find body then we need to check user exit or customer exit and if these two three are not available then last option is we need to go for implicit or explicit enhancement so all these techniques we are going to see how to enhance means how to enrich standard or standard application any doubt still here oh. But a single doubt. Uh, yeah. What is the exact difference between the ABAP consultant and the developers? Is the only one? Uh, see, there is no such a major uh, difference. See, as an ABAP developer and an ABAP consultant means uh, consulting is what? Consulting is means a uh, consulting uh, means we need to uh, give us such an ideal solution. We need to consult to the business like. these are the options available and this is these are the ideal options available okay, okay which is recommended by sap only see if you want to achieve the particular requirement there are lot of options we can do uh, we can do it uh, by choosing any way but we have to choose uh, which is standard way to achieve that requirement so consulting means what we need to give the best solution so we need to uh, find the technical solution for that requirement and development mean developer means what there is no such huge difference between development and consulting and uh, in development uh, means as a sap developer means we have to implement that, that yeah we implement that we have to implement the solution and again means it's not means it's not like that we need no, no need to find any ideal solution for um, no need to find a ideal solution when you are in developer role both we have both a uh, consultant also and developer also both they have to find the uh, the solution which is recommended by sap okay when implementing any custom requirement and they both have to do implementation there is no such a, a big uh, difference <clears throat> yeah when you uh, talk to the specific project within organization it depends on it means uh, if they are uh, keeping the role of consultant different then they will just give an it reviews like they will just uh, when requirement comes from the functional they will just analyze they will find a feasible solution and it will come to the uh, 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 people who are developing that actual solution so uh, in enhancement we will enhance the existing software next is a transport request so there are three servers available in sap like there is a, a development server is there quality server is there and production server is there production server is a live server which end users are working on it so development server we have to develop our code on a development server once code is uh, ready then we need to move that code to the quality server for testing purpose if everything goes well then we need to move that request to the production server so basically we have to write the code only once on a development server and we need to save that code in a specific request so that it, when we import that request on a develop on a quality or on a production server automatically that code will get replicated on a quality or production server so in such a way that uh, we want to uh, if we make a changes in a development server then again the, the, it will saved in a request once we import that request then all the changes will get replicated on a quality and production server means as and when we import the request so like a technical consultant like we use this workbench request and functional people who do configuration okay through the spro they will use customizing request so this is a basic difference workbench request will be used by us for uh, coding related development and the if we want they if they are changing the configuration then the functional consultant will use a customizing request next is a cross applications yeah to the cross application we can connect to sap system like means uh, we can connect means uh, to the rfc connections remote function call we can um, if there are two sap systems if we want to extract data from other sap system then through the rfc function modules we can achieve this through the idoc also we can transfer data from one sap system to another system so these are the cross application it just if you want to connect through sap systems then we can uh, we can achieve it if you want to transfer data if you want to get data so there is it just data uh, data transfer between two systems we can achieve through the idocs okay rfc is also means remotely we can connect to sap systems and get the data we can send the data 
Yes, no. Okay. Yeah. So next is a code optimization techniques. We are going to learn what is a parallel cursor technique, what is a binary search. See, there are seven plus means there are a lot of code optimization techniques. See, anyone can learn how anyone can learn ABAP coding, but it's not uh, it's not only uh, learn, learning about ABAP coding. We need to write a code which will give a best performance, which will reduce the load on a database. So code optimization techniques are very, very important. Definitely you'll get a question in an interview, like what are the code optimization techniques? Suppose you have uh, this code and how will you optimize? They will give a scenario and you, you, you will get a question like this is a code and how will you optimize this? So you have to check all the parameters mm -hmm. and you need to optimize the code and you need to check how means what is the performance of that code. So all these things we are going to cover in a code optimization. Next is object oriented programming. So we will see how to write code in a procedural way and the same piece of code we will try to convert in an object oriented concepts. So we'll write that code in class and methods. We will use all these techniques and we will object nowadays object oriented OIPAP is also in huge demand. So definitely we need to see all these techniques, how we can use NABAP. Well, you can explain all this uh, brief but, uh, later, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing, yes, yes, yes. Uh, when we start with this topic, we definitely will. I will provide notes also. Okay, and I will explain each and every uh, point and topic in very detail. And we will see practical example of this also. How to create an inher inheritance, how to use any okay. given assignments also, so that you will get an idea about. Yeah, next is Abba Bunhana. And Abba Bunhana basically will see what is the difference between uh, database. And our database and our three our three database so basically we will see what is the difference between databases okay what is the row and column store uh, column storage means how there are to store the data in a system we have two options we can store it row by row or we can store it column by column so data saving or data so we will see this major techniques what are the difference between this just for knowledge point of view because you will get a question on an interview okay what is row storage and column storage okay we'll see cds in series means core data services. These are nothing but views for data extraction. We'll see MDP methods, ABAP managed database procedures. Here we'll we have to learn little native skill also. So we'll learn this LV IDA and new HANA syntaxes. So basically, I'm going to cover only these five uh, topics in on ABAP and HANA in ABAP and HANA. So these are just uh, uh, these are just super fast methods. To get the data from HANA or uh, to get the data from database. These are the advanced techniques. Netweaver and uh, HANA, it's quite similar. Uh, it's quite, it's uh, the functioning similar. Are similar. Yeah, it's a function similar, but we have okay. difference in a database only. And okay. in as for HANA, there is a there is a change in database tables. Means database table names are changed. Some tables are combined together and there are some changes in T codes also and the screen designing and all these things, little changes are there. But uh, basically we need to go with core ABAP first and then we need to learn ABAP and HANA. So this is all about course.